I'm Precision Weather Meteorologist Russ Murley on WHOU. Thank you very much, Russ Murley. And I know we didn't get all the way ahead to next Saturday, but he is saying he's predicting good weather for next Saturday, regardless of what the Weather Channel says right now. Next Saturday for the Black Fly Brewfest, May 14th, we are on And it's going to be good. It's going to be nice. And we're going to have great food. And those guys are going to be all outside. Anyway, Jane and Kent and John are here in the studio with me right now. These are the guys and girls, guys and one girl, (laughs) who really put this whole thing together, have organized it, have spent all the time, the money, and made all of the effort since January of this year to make this uh, Black Fly Brewfest happen. It is the premier brewfest and one of the premier events, I think, in Holton that we've ever had. Jane, can you can you fill us in on what's going on? Well, you know, I prefer, be, instead of boys and girls, I prefer a dynamic trio because <laughs> these two guys have been incredible. Yeah. Um, John with uh, Facebook posts and, and, uh, and media. Uh, Kent, his support with the Thirsty Dog has been incredible. Uh, he'll be ordering all the beer for us, as a matter of fact, I believe today, right, Kent? That's correct. So, there's, the logistics are huge. Um, we got our glasses yesterday, um, and uh, we're really excited. They're absolutely adorable. The guys are cringing a little bit when I say that, but, uh, um, you know, it kind of makes us realize this is really going to happen. It is. It's, it's, very it's exciting. in. It's in. Yes. It's, they're beautiful. The glasses are beautiful. We have them here on display in the studio. and Tasting glasses, yeah. Yeah. I'm just very happy to be uh, involved at all in this. I can't wait to be there well we didn't exactly drag you in kicking and screaming chris oh come on you twisted really my arm like so this. hard yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no it's going to be a tremendous event there's absolutely nothing better um tell people how lucky they are because i think you know we haven't really been involved in the craft beer world or a lot of people haven't around here especially really right down involved in it but these are the premier brewers not just in maine but everywhere we are so fortunate to have some of these people coming to town now i know you did some special things as far as the chamber is concerned you guys are doing a dinner and you're going to treat them really right when they come here so they're going to have a uh, second to none experience the brewers themselves this is not something that they do at the other brew fest right right no this is really a chance for holton to show some hospitality to these brewers that are making quite a hike they're coming up from southern maine to be here they're coming up on friday uh, we'll do the dinner that night at the elks club uh, which is going to be a lot of fun i'm, I'm sure um, and Saturday from 12 to 5 is the Brewfest. We will have some tickets to sell at the door, but they will be limited and they will be more expensive. So get those tickets online right now, online or at the Chamber or at the Thirsty Dog. And if you go to the Thirsty Dog, you can actually pick up some product, too. You, you can do that. Yeah. Return your bottles while you're there. It's a multi-use place. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> <laughs> Kent, are you ready for this festival? I am so ready. I am so ready. This has been a, a long haul to bring us all together, but it's going to be well worth it, I think. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's worth it already to me, and I haven't even gotten there. It's worth it already. <laughs> Some of the dreams I've been telling people, the dreams I have at night about this brew fest, I mean, my goodness, it's I, already there. I think it's created uh, quite a lot of excitement, not only in Holton, but in Aroostook County, and actually throughout the state. So And into Canada. And into Canada. Mm-hmm. So I think we will see uh, people from all over the state of Maine and Canada attending this brew fest in Holton, Maine. So. Yes, I agree with you. And John White, you've been in touch with a lot of the brewers personally. You've talked with them. What's their take on on what they're going to be doing up here in Holton? How are they feeling about this event? No, oh, they're getting really excited about it. Um, Jane and, and the chambers done a great job, really making this special for them and for everyone that's coming. Um, and I see them all on even on Facebook now. They're making posts and they're all getting excited. And, and a lot of them have never been to the county, and they're they're really looking forward to it. Some are making like week long trips next week up here. Is that right? Yeah. They're going to take a whole vacation right here. We are positioned exactly where we should be at the end of 95 in the Trans Canada. We could not be in a better position to have events like this and event this event or any event like this. I think we're finally utilizing what Holton is really meant to be with all the exchanges of all the roads coming here, Route 2, Route 1. We are the epicenter, and I'm so glad that you guys have decided to take advantage and doing it with the Brewfest, showing everybody what Holton's really made of. That's oh. very true. When yeah. Kent and I first had both decided we need a brew fest in Holton, and then when Kent went and talked to Jane and she was right on board, it was great because the chamber jumped right on this, and Jane really took a chance on this, and I think it's going to pay off. And I think it's, I've said this before, it's a great event for the community because we're bringing so many people that have never been up here 
they get to see what Rooster County is all about. And as you know, it's the greatest place on earth. It is the most fantastic place on the planet. I agree with you 100%. And I've been everywhere. Well, not everywhere, but a lot of places. We have one of our brewers that came up Wednesday with his family and will be at the brew fest with his family. So for those that think that it, it's, it, it is an adult-centered activity and, and really you have to be 21 to, to, really, to come through the doors, these people are also bringing their families to, to enjoy Holton and, and uh, to, to hang out and see what we have to offer. Which we do have an awful lot. All the outdoor activities, all the things. Oh, and we have black flies. We will have black flies. I'm pretty sure they'll be making an appearance just for this event. I think they will. I think that's yes. going to be just about right. The temperature's going to be right. The weather's going to be right for the black flies and the black fly brew fest. I'm kind of happy that we're going to be in the building. <laughs> the great thing is that you never really even know that one of them's gotten you until you see that little trickle of blood that runs down right, the side right. of your neck. So these guys are going to be in for a treat. Taste the bite. <laughs> Thanks the bite, indeed. <laughs> what else can you guys tell us? Uh, I know you've been organizing and working and working. I'm a Brewfest fan. What am I going to expect when I arrive at the door and I got my VIP ticket? <laughs> well, you're going to get in an hour and a half early. Okay. Um, so you can enjoy some special, uh, some special blends. The Crooked Halo Cider House, and I think I've got some of those words mixed up. You know, when you're dealing with 30 of these people that, you know, sometimes you get the, the names a little bit off. But anyway, he's bringing a special... Uh, pineapple cider that he has been curing in tequila barrels and it's just it's going to be ready for our event nobody else has tasted it the VIPs will be the first so we're gonna you know any if you're a VIP you're gonna mm -hmm. get to give your opinion on what that tastes like to the brewer and you're gonna be able to be a part of the next generation of that and others that are gonna true. do the same thing and others are bringing things that have never been tasted before just for the VIPs that come in the door Right, and, and again, you'll be part of that process mm -hmm. and tell people what you think, and, and they will make the adjustments in their recipes. True. So it'll be even better the next time around, or it'll already be fantabulous. It, it is, and Kent, tell me, um, you, you know these people better than I. Um, some of these people, this is their first Brewfest ever. This is their first Brewfest ever, that's right. For example, Mason's mm -hmm. and Brewer. Uh, Lone Pine Brewing out of Portland. Lone Pine Brewing. There was another one, too, wasn't there? I had a call from the brewer from Lone Pine Brewing yesterday who said they're very excited to come up. Um, they switched things around a little bit, and the brewer and his wife are coming up to be part of this. That's awesome. A lot like, of, and, that, and that's one thing people have been asking lately because they've gone to some other brew fests that didn't have the brewers there, and they want to ask questions about the beer and learn more about it, <laughs> the whole process. And the people there are like, well, we're just volunteering. That's not going to happen here in Holton. We have the brewers, the brewing staff, first class all the way yeah and people really need to realize how lucky this is for anyone that has any interest in the craft brew world especially the main beer they're all going to be right here yeah it's, it's absolutely right this is the event it really is in every single aspect in every way you can think about it and talk about it it really is the event john talk a little bit about um the, the brewing process you know you've got masons it's brand new that has incredible um tanks that they can brew in and then you get the guys like blank canvas that are brewing in a i'm going to say half barrel system. that's a half that barrel yeah so so tell us a little bit about that now because that, and yet they're these guys are all different size you got the huge people like allagash who are just a ginormous and shipyard who's one of the biggest ones in new england and they're pumping out tons of product and they have big distribution but there's a lot of the little guys making great beer like blank canvas that you just spoke of and he does he brews in a half barrel system that he got from uh I can't remember the other brewery that he got it from, but anyway, so much smaller, but still making amazing beer. I'm going to have three of them here in Holton. Uh, a lot of them do like a seven barrel system, a, th a five barrel system. Just there's so many different sized barrels, but the 20 barrel system that Gagans uses is the same size that Mason's is using. So two brewers right down in the Bangor brewery area using these massive 20 barrel systems. I think it's, it's incredible. It is, but I love the variety. You know, you have the, you have the little guy and you have the big guy, the side by side. There's no competition with these guys. Of course, they all want to make a better beer, but you know. But that, that's they, the but thing I love about it. It's, it's a community. Yeah. And speaking yeah. of variety, if you if you, this fest is really going to be offering a large variety. We're looking at a hundred plus barrels of beer at this fest. Right. All different beers. Yep. So, uh, you're in for a real treat if you come to this. And wines. And there two are two wineries. Yeah. Yes. Winterport two, two Winery and Hidden Spring. That two, is actually yeah. in Hutchinson. Yeah. yeah. Two wineries, but they're bringing a whole plethora of different tastes with them, too. Yes. And it's not it's not a three 
we're not bringing three wines, we're bringing seven, you know? It's exactly. like that. Actually, there are, I think each one of them are bringing six or seven different wines right. to taste. Right, so, so, they're, so if yeah. you've got someone that's into mm-hmm. wine and they don't want to do the, the brews, because some people mm-hmm. don't, you can sit and taste wine all day long. you got 14 of them to try. Yeah. At least. Yeah. And, and don't forget the food. You know, we have oh. amazing food. The, the, I'm gonna, am I saying this right, John? The Blazin Nation food wagon? The Blazin Nation wood-fired like food that. trailer. Wood-fired food trailer. <laughs> <Something like that. laughs> Making the wood-fired pizza, which yeah. I had some down. I've made a few trips down to Blazin since this has all began. Since yeah. Matty Haskell, he's a really great guy, right into craft beer. And I tried this uh, pizza he's got. Hopefully he makes this one. It's called When Pigs Fly. And it's got sounds like bacon. It's got goat cheese, <laughs> and bacon and lamb. And I'm like, this sounds way too high class for me. I don't get into fancy foods, but it was incredible. <laughs> yeah, it, the food is 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 amazing. So they'll be there. The bus will be there for those people that want those burgers mm-hmm. and fries. Oh, and uh, their steak and cheese. Their steak and cheese steak now and cheese has really pepperoni good. in it. They oh, put awesome. what? Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, you haven't tried it yet. No, I'm going to have to go down today, maybe. Get a taste of it today so you'll be ready for the brew fest. Joyce Transu is doing her, uh, uh, she has a signature wonton that, that they've done there for 18 years. Um, mm-hmm. She'll be doing wontons there for people who just want to pick up a little something and bring it back to a table and, you know, enjoy a beer and and, uh, and try these wontons. She's also doing a, a uh, uh, beer-infused chili that Ooh-hoo. she's going to be serving. And then uh, Steve Pangburn's coming down with his bus and he's doing lobster rolls. So something for everybody. Oh boy, lobster yeah. rolls. Yeah, I'm thinking yeah. three meals there, mm-hmm. plus lots of brew tasting and mm-hmm. wine tasting. That's what I'm thinking. And and, and we do want to tell people um, there there will also be a table with just water and soda on it. Mm-hmm. So and and we encourage people to hydrate, not just with beer. We do want them to hydrate with water along the way because you know we're not encouraging that you know let's come in here and get drunk. We're 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 encouraging that educational experience of, of trying these beers so then you can go to kent's store after and, and buy something and take it home and right and uh so yeah it's gonna be awesome and that's something i think is great um people are probably a lot of people haven't tried it and they've been always probably saying geez what's a thirsty dog down there i don't know what to drink down there what's an ipa what's a what's a sour well mm-hmm. come what better chance than come here with a hundred different beers mm-hmm. styles ranging from everything like i said sours to brown ales to Saison. IPAs, double IPAs, yes, yeah, everything. Farmhouse AL, and there's so, just so many things. So come and get the four-ounce sample, try it. If you like it, I don't know, we'll jot it down and go to Kent's and say, this. I like this style beer. And right. John's going to cry when I say this, but if you get something and you think, oh, I really don't like that, you don't have to drink it. You go to a dumping station, you dump it out, you rinse your glass, and then you go to somebody else and you try something else. I know, look at the looks on your faces, guys. You just, you just, just, hey, you just, just holler, Chris, Chris, I don't really like this one. <laughs> but you know what happens, and and they, not everybody likes a sour, and not everybody right. likes uh, ciders. And and, like and the to, brewers don't yeah. get offended if you they do not. don't like it. If you're trying something new, so they don't at all get offended if you say, oh. Mm-hmm. They understand not everyone likes every style beer or every taste of beer, so... Right, but with over a hundred different flavors to choose from, and that's just in the brews, you're going to find something that you like. You're going to find something that, that points you in a direction, because yeah. that's what happens to all. Has happened to all of us when we've tried the craft beers. We found a way that we wanted to go, and all of a sudden, we're into fifty other different beers, and they're so tasty. You know, and you yeah. don't have to have mm-hmm. twenty of them. You only have to have one, <laughs> two, and you're, you're, you know what I mean. Well, the, the, a lot of these craft beers, too, are they're heavier than regular beers, the Buds and the Bud Lights. So. Oh, my goodness, yes. Yeah. They're much more flavorful. Yeah. Oh, they just explode in your mouth as comparison to a, a Coors Light or a Bud Light or something like mm-hmm. that. It's just a totally different experience. And if you can do it, if you, if you enjoy it, you're going to find that you have a whole new world opened up to you and a lot of enjoyment and a lot of good times. The craft beer community, like you say, John, the craft beer community is all about sharing and making this an event and involving the whole entire family. It's a very European sense to yep. me. Yeah, 71 craft brewers in the state of Maine right now and growing all the time. Right. We have one opening up in uh, Caribou. Yes. So. Yeah, there's yeah. one opening in Caribou, a couple more coming to Bangor this year. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bangor really has become the new Portland. They'll never be Portland because Portland's insane, but you know what I mean? It, yeah. It's just growing and growing. Right. Now that's coming to the county, who knows, maybe there'll be one here in Holton someday. I can't imagine why there wouldn't be now that the reputation is out there that Maine is sure. brewing the best craft brews on the planet. I think there's going to be an awful lot of interest in anything that's produced in Maine. So it's almost a, a no-brainer. Make some beer in Maine and make a fortune. And you know, when we first started contacting brewers and, and I 
got to go make a few trips and push this on the it brewers. Was tough, and and wasn't it, John? it was very <laughs> difficult. This has been such hard work going down to meet all the brewers. But I said, you know, if we could get two or three Portland brewers, I think even Kent, we were talking in the beginning, if we could just get a few of the Portland ones up here, how awesome would that be? Well, thanks to Jane's great ideas of, of tying everything together with and really treating the brewers with the respect they deserve and, and making it easier for them to come out, we have almost the entire Portland scene. Portland and beyond, Wells, Maine, Hidden Cove, uh, York, um, Sun Bruin. Bitterford. Yeah, yeah, everywhere from down there. South Portland, uh, Westbrook. We have brewers from all over the state. It's incredible. We actually have Monhegan coming from uh, Monhegan Island. That's right. They're actually going to get on the ferry and... They got to ferry us. their beer over to the mainland and drive up here. So, <laughs> how awesome is that? That is dedicated, isn't it? Yeah. That's great. They're just coming to see you, Jane. Jump in, can't you? Any, <laughs> anytime. I know John and I just once we get talking about this, we can't stop. But <laughs> yeah, so true. Can't help it, man. This is going to be one incredible event. And you can't see Kent here, but he's got a great big smile on his face. He knows this is going to be phenomenal. And I think he just wants the, the event to happen and show everybody in the community and in the state what can really be done when people work together and have a, a common goal and really put forth all the effort that they can put forth. It really does make a difference. And work together, not against each other. This is a lesson and, and somebody that everyone should see. I think this is how it should be done in all aspects, in all of our organizations. Well, Kent actually has a title, and he's he, we should get him a crown, John, but he is actually <laughs> our beer master for this event. Really? So he's in charge of, of um, you know, I get I get the list from all the brewers and what they're going to bring. And it's not easy because they all want to talk about what they're bringing, and then they change it, and then John says, hey, could you just grab this one and bring this one? And, and before you know it, you know, everybody's, like, changing things up. So it's been a, a wild ride the last couple yeah. of weeks, but... But Kent is in charge of ordering it from distributors. You have to order each beer from this person's distributor by law. Okay. So he's ordering all the beers. We'll get it here. Um, we we have a, a, a reefer truck that it goes in to keep it cool the whole time in an undisclosed location, by the way. <laughs> Don't tell me. Don't Not tell telling me. anybody. And uh, we're sworn to secrecy. It's just like the the Price Waterhouse people at the at the at the Emmy Awards. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> I think Chris and I will guard that for you, Jane. No, I don't think so. No. <laughs> they will not uh, give us the keys to that one. I'm telling you, John. So you know he's going to keep everything in order. You know when you're dealing with a hundred different styles of beer. It's it and, gets and thirty chaotic. different breweries. It's uh, it gets chaotic. You know, logistically, yeah. it's uh, yeah. it's it's a it's a job. So. Yeah, but it's going to be well worth it. And I have to say, the distributors have been have been amazing. You know, from uh, t can't, tell me the distributors again. I uh, main distributors out of uh, Bangor, Arusik Beverage, uh, and Pine State, uh, out, of, out of Augusta. You have Vacation Land Distributors, who's been a terrific help to us through this whole process. Uh, some of the little craft ones. Craft beer have. guilds. Yeah. They're uh, even coming up here. Mary. And they don't usually come here, but they're gonna make a make a make a trip so, for us. The actual guild. Wow. Yeah. That's so, tremendous. Yeah, so that, and so I actually deal with all these vendors myself at these stores, so I actually offer several of these beers that are going to be here. So mm -hmm. um I'm excited for people to get a chance to actually try them and, and like John said, to maybe recognize a style or two or three that they may like and and once you get a style that you like, the sky's the limit for that style. I mean, mm -hmm. you, there's there's so many things you can try. And sometimes, mm -hmm. like for me, you know, I'll walk into Kent's store, and, and I see a six-pack of something, and I'm thinking, I don't know what that tastes like. Do I want to put the money into that six-pack? You know, what if I don't like it? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you come to the brew fest, and you, you get the chance to taste something and say, yeah, I think mm -hmm. I'll try this. I think I'll go there and, and get it. But uh, are you getting any business done, by the way? You're selling tickets, and... You must be doing that. I haven't got much. Time. I haven't got much business done lately. You haven't. No, I don't think so. Yeah. so Ken's selling tickets. Been all about Brewfest, 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 all the way. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. I'll uh, try to make it easy for you, but. Oh, that's terrific. That's great news. Uh, it's going to be happening next so, week. So tickets are taking off this week. So yeah. I would suggest everyone uh, jump in there and grab their tickets now while well, there's still plenty. Uh, but they are really starting to move. So. And we do have lots of space at the Civic Center. The, the, the great thing about doing it there is that we have a lot of space. But tickets will be more expensive at the, at the door. So right. so buy them now. Absolutely. Yeah. Because they may be sold out. I mean, I keep hearing it. You, you think that there's lots of room there. And you, I know you guys there are is. trying to downplay how many people will be there. But it could definitely be sold out before oh, we hope next so. Friday comes we hope around. So. Yeah, yeah. So you can get tickets on Eventbrite. 
Yep. If you get on www.blackflybrewfest.com, <laughs> you can buy them on the Eventbrite site. Um, you can buy them at the Chamber of Commerce, or you can buy them at the Thirsty Dog. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. I, we might even give away one or two here. We might. I think so. You never know. Uh, well, <laughs> stay tuned. Well, stay tuned. Huh? Thank you, folks, so much for coming in today. Appreciate you taking the time out of your day, John. You look like you got something you really want to say before no, I say I, I could talk for hours about beer. So. <laughs> <laughs> Since I'm not done talking for another week, right? But I, w I did want to mention somebody else. I don't not to drop names and stuff, but uh, <laughs> but here we Brett, go. I was just talking to one of the brewers the other day who's bringing um, a sour beer that they've never made. This Rick England from uh, Marsh Island down in Orono. Mm -hmm. He's been especially at the beginning a tremendous help for us. He got me in contact with many different people including uh matt the uh, haskell from blazing nation and he got me in contact with several of the portland brewers he was really a great help i want to thank him you know marsh island check them out and it's a brand new beer for vips a sour beer they this is their first time ever they're unveiling it at the black fly brew fest i think that's awesome yeah that is incredible and i want to thank tom wells because he's a friend of john's and he well that's that's <laughs> that, that's enough us, right there he put up with us a lot when we were trying to figure out this logo you know he, yeah. he'd send it and we'd say nah and we'd send, send another one and we'd say yeah could you do this and then he'd send another one and finally he just said Take it or leave figure it. it out. I'm done. I'm almost done with this, and so we, we got the best one I think we could get. And he he was he was awesome. He was a good sport. Yes, oh, he yes. did a great he job a great with the logos, and and he he also helped us get connected with some of the brewers down there. Right. He lives down in the lower Orchard, and he he got us in contact with uh, Barrel Souls and Saco yep. and uh, Bandit Horn down in Biddeford. So that's pretty awesome too. And he's a Holden boy. Yes, he is. And so. I believe he's coming up for this. Huh. He's coming. Oh, and this is a whole event, event for Tom and the boys. Him. After all that, we made him buy his own ticket. <laughs> <laughs> we did. <laughs> no, but he, he's a he's a home brewer, and they do some really good home brews. I I don't want to put it. I'm not going to say nothing more on that. But anyway, he's got a whole group that does it, and a bunch of them are coming up to Holden, and they love coming out to camp and coming to Blackfly Brew Fest and. It's They're gonna making be a great. Weekend, aren't, aren't They're there? making a whole yeah. week. It's gonna mm -hmm. be great for them. That's okay. gonna be a hideaway out to camp. I can tell already. <laughs> Literally. Which, which camp? I haven't. I'm not, should we address, talk about that yeah. on the air? <laughs> no, that's secret. Just like the location of the beer. So. <laughs> yeah, those two, two top secret locations. Again, thank you guys so much for coming in. I'd like to be able to get together at least one more time before the Brewfest actually happens. You know, next Friday we can really give people the rundown and tell them the you know the tickets are all sold too late. No, we won't say that. Well, maybe we well, will. We might. You we might. Know. So get your tickets. Get them today. We are lucky to have the Brewfest in town. We're lucky to have these great people who have done all the organizing and taken all the time and really put the effort into this program. And I think you're going to see this is the way things should be done in the future. People should really look at this and uh, take the lessons that were learned here and put them into practice in the town and in the communities all throughout Aroostook County. You know, Penobscot County, Piscataqua County, Millinocket. This is the way things should really be going. Well, can, I, can I thank our sponsors? Sure. I know you probably want to go, no, and here I am going on and on. Yorks of Holton has really, has really believed in us and, and really stepped up to the plate. York, so Yorks of Holton, thank you so much. AgriCal, uh, Shiretown Inn and Suites is our official hotel. The Thirsty Dog, um, who am I missing? Here? Oh, High Grow Organics. Hi they, Organics have been, yeah. they have been awesome. People that really just wanted to help us out. We really yeah. appreciate that. They had the faith. Yes. We won't disappoint them. And we got to thank WHOU for letting us come on and speak oh, all the times. Oh, thank you. Oh, and State Farm Insurance. Here yep. I am forgetting somebody already. That's the problem when you start reading lists. You just you well, you don't you're dealing with many yeah, different businesses and names yeah. and brewers, Jane. Yeah. I don't know how you keep it all straight, I, to be honest. I but. have charts. I have charts everywhere. It's great. <laughs> Folks, we'll see you next week. And uh, any of you guys listening, we'll see you next Saturday at the Brewfest. Mm-hmm.